Hey, how's everybody doing? I'm Chris Ignato and uh, well, thanks for stopping by. So, it's October now. It's the time for spiders. There's gonna be some good ones and the other night I was out setting up a light trap. I decided to walk around a little bit using my headlamp and stuff and I just found eye shine everywhere. I was out in the pines of course and so upon further investigation I discovered a beautiful species of wolf spider that's called Hogna baltimorea I believe and uh, of course the Carolina wolf spider which is a beautiful species. Check this out they are pretty impressive spiders. This is Hogna carolinensis better known to you and me as the Carolina wolf spider. The Carolina wolf spider is my second favorite species of wolf spider, but I'm pretty sure that it's the, the largest North American wolf spider that you can find. These things can get pretty big. I love the velvety light gray of this particular species. Holy crap. Those black designs on it and the yellow that's found on the legs of some of the individuals really completes the beauty of this species. It's interesting, whenever I tap the ground, the spider jumps. Um, I don't know if that's to alarm the predator, which it works, or the spider itself is just jumping at the fright. And when that fails, they just bolt off into the dark. The reason I love the Carolina so much is not because of their impressive looks. I mean, they are beautiful and they can get fairly large but it's their venom. They've got one of the coolest venoms out there. I mean, of course it's got the typical paralyzing properties and all that good stuff, of course, right? But it's also got antimicrobial properties. This, this spider's venom pretty much protects it from bacterial and microbial infections from its food source. How cool is that? They are just starting to study the spider's venom in the labs against certain strains of Staphylococcus. As you may know, some strains of Staph are proving to be resistant to antibiotics, and that's really scary for you know, some of the patients out there. It would be amazing if this proves effective. I'm personally wondering what type of benefits the spider's venom has on mycological infections. Obviously, insects and arachnids really have to watch out for fungal spores, especially cordyceps, right? There are a lot of species of fungi out there that specialize not just on invertebrates, but arachnids. Once they get a spore or two, they don't stand a chance. If this spider's venom proves not only beneficial against certain bacterial strains, but also some of the mycological infections that happen to people, I definitely think it's worth pursuing. That could really benefit the medical industry and possibly save a lot of lives. And, you know, at the very least, maybe it can give us some good insights in the medical field as far as combating bacterial and mycological infections. That'd be a great thing, and I say, go for it. Oh my God, so check out when I zoom in on the face of this Carolina wool. Look at those eyes. Tell me it doesn't remind you of a skull or some alien. Now imagine being small and you're strolling around looking for food. You're around the corner of some grass species just to come face to face with that. No, thank you. I'm so glad I'm big. These woods are just rampant with wolves tonight. You could tell just by looking at them that these wolf spiders are ambush predators and active hunters. Now I want to show you something else that I'm very excited about. I found these holes in the ground just a hundred times over the years and I was pretty sure that some kind of wolf spider or something probably lived in them because the, the needles around the entrance to the holes are too organized, too deliberate looking. And uh, finally I've got my proof. Check this out. So yeah, this spider is basically waiting just at the entrance of its burrow for some unsuspecting prey item to walk by. Spider feels the vibrations and darts out, grabs the prey, bites it, pulls it back into the burrow in the blink of an eye. 
almost as fast as a trapdoor spider. Yeah, this is a big spider. That hole is about as big around as my thumb. I'm not exaggerating. Wow, right? I mean, those are some pretty big burrows, and I looked into one of them, and it was definitely 18 inches straight down. Totally smooth, perfectly round, very white, lined with silk. I tried to film, but I couldn't get the flashlight and lens in the same position to see into the burrow, so you gotta take my word for it. Every time I come close to one of these, they dart back into the burrow. These spiders are so timid. I make the slightest wrong move, and bam, I'm not gonna see her for 30 minutes. Bet you didn't know these were in your woods. Like, that's not a perfect example of an ambush predator. Man, I'm finding this Baltimoreana all over the pines this week. So this tends to be a bit of a common species in the fall in the Pine Barrens. Surprisingly, I've never been able to find a common name for it. If you guys know the common name, please let me know. It's a beautiful species and the, the cephalothorax kind of makes me think of some of the tarantula species. Uh, it's just beautiful, beautiful spider. This is definitely to me, the most beautiful Lycosidae of all. What a, what a cool spider. So something I find interesting is the fact that these spiders' eyes reflect my headlamp so brilliantly. That's how I find a lot of species of spider. You know, I usually figure that's reserved for mammals and certain nocturnal birds, but, you know, and moths, their eyes reflect, but for, there's different science behind that. These spiders, it's reflective retinas, I imagine. Same thing as like cats, right? And I, I mentioned it to my mom one time. I'm like, I find it interesting that something so small, spiders rely on other signals to secure their food. Their eyes aren't very useful. And she was like, well, what about, you know, spiders that live in their webs, like orb weavers and stuff? Do their eyes reflect? And I'm like, not really. I don't recall them doing so. And uh, she's like, well, there you go. They use their you know, the silk to signal food and get their information that way, vibrations and temperatures. Whereas these wolf spiders, they rely a lot on vision for tracking down their prey. I mean, wolf spider for a reason, right? They're ambush and hunting predators. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. So these, these ground hunters have the reflective eyes because they use their eyes to secure food, but to a greater extent than I had imagined. That basically implies that they have fairly good night vision or else why waste the biology on developing reflective retinas, you know, so that you can pick up those stray photons of light that miss the, the cones on their way through. Anyways, really interesting stuff and uh, cool thinking, Mom. Those are pretty intriguing spiders, aren't they? I mean that Hagna Baltimorea, I've never found a common name for it, but they're beautiful. I'm surprised they don't have a common name. They're really striking. They kind of remind me of the ornamental tarantulas. And then the Carolina wolf spider, that also reminds me of the ornamentals. Beautiful species. They're on the bigger side and just really incredible spiders. Unfortunately, I was filming with 4K for some of the clips, and when you move the camera, it's just, you know, that slow shutter speed makes a lot of streaks when you're turning the camera. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was a short one. I just really wanted you to see those spiders. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.